Now, if there's one expert on African Americans in this country, it's clearly Bill O'Reilly. Now, uh, he's gonna be talking about legalizing pot, uh, but he says he's here to protect African Americans from themselves, that we should continue to throw a disproportionate number of them in prison for smoking marijuana because uh, if we legalized it, well, then obviously more African Americans would smoke pot and that would be uh, against their interests. Bill, please tell us about what African Americans should do. As you said earlier, the last thing that poor communities need is another substance. Actually, there are eight times as many liquor stores in poor communities of color in this country. Why would we want to add another? You know, the unintended consequence of legalization of anything is to send a message to children that it's socially acceptable. I mean, any parent who would smoke marijuana in front of their child is abusing the child, in my opinion. And now you're going to have pot shops, you're going to buy it in 7-Eleven, it's insane. It's insane, it's insane. Uh, he was at first talking to anti-legalization anti advocate Kevin Sabat, uh, and then later he was uh, directing his ire at uh, Stephen Gutwillig from the Drug Policy Alliance, okay? But uh, now we arrest, and for example, in 2012, 685,000 people in that year alone for marijuana possession. For marijuana possess, 685,000 people. Now, O'Reilly in this segment acknowledged, yes, white people smoke pot at the same rate as black people. Okay, now, but he's just worried about black people. Don't worry about the white people, okay? Just because he's concerned, his heart goes out to African Americans, right? He also acknowledged that they're put in prison at four times the rate. And now, oh, did he talk about why? Did he talk about perhaps uh, authorities make certain assumptions about African Americans? Now, if the smoking rate, the possession rate is the same, but one group goes to jail four times more, why, why? Could it be that they're prosecuted more? No, 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 that was not addressed on Fox News Channel. Because it turns out Bill O'Reilly knows what the problem is. It's actually black culture. Or as he puts it in this clip, ghetto culture. Let's watch. The left is basically saying harmless. Okay, which I don't agree with, and I think you don't agree. No, it's not a harmless, harmless substance, all right? And right. you know, it's it's blacks. You know, you get the, you trap you trap in the blacks because in well, here's certain the ghetto neighborhoods, it's part of the culture. Nine-year-old boys and girls are smoking it, and they don't like that. They don't want those kids well, to be uh, targeted by the well, cops. Well, well. Did you hear? He said it's ghetto culture that nine-year-olds smoke pot. <laughs> Bill. First of all, no one says ghetto anymore, okay? Uh, but second of all, okay, fine, you use whatever term you want. You pretend that you're trying to look out for nine-year-old African Americans who've been swallowed up by the ghetto culture, right? How would you know? When's the last time you were into ghetto, Bill, okay? When's the last time you went to an African American community and you saw a nine-year-old smoking pot? When did that happen? Who told you about that? Did you read an article about it? Do you have any? Context for it? Do you have any sites for it? Can you cite any sources whatsoever for that? No, no, no. Ghetto culture, you know how they are. They smoke at nine years old. Now, to be fair to Bill O'Reilly, he did once go to an African American neighborhood. He told the story famously a couple of years back when he went uh, to a restaurant with Al Sharpton, and it was an African American neighborhood, and he was shocked by what he found. And it's weird because he's a really good study of African American culture, but listen to his surprise here. And I couldn't get over the fact that there was no difference between Sylvia's restaurant and any other restaurant in New York City. I mean, it was a, it was exactly the same, even though it's run by blacks, primarily uh, black patronship. There wasn't one person in Sylvia's who was uh, screaming, mf -er, I want more iced tea. Please. You know, I mean, it, everybody was, uh, it was like going into an Italian restaurant in an all-white suburb in the sense of people were sitting there and they were ordering and having fun and there wasn't any kind of craziness at all. I'm sorry, I take it back, man. I didn't know you knew black people that well. Turns out you once went to a black restaurant and you were shocked to find out that they weren't all screaming, hey, I'm a motherfucker, get me some iced tea. You were surprised at that fact. Okay, my bad. I, you know, uh, apparently you really are a study. Are you, wait, did you have a PhD in African American studies? <laughs> and he has the nerve to pretend that uh, he's trying to protect African Americans from liberals 
who pretend to be trying to help them by getting them out of jail for goddamn marijuana possession, ruining their lives over marijuana possession. But no, no, apparently that's a front by liberals. They don't actually want to help them. They actually want to encourage the ghetto culture where fetuses are smoking pot through the moms. You know, Bill knows. Bill knows. No, don't question him. If there's some, if there's one person in America that knows about the ghetto, it's Bill O'Reilly.